Hey guys, welcome back. So I am in the process right now of doing a finished cleanup on this EV99 back panel, which goes with the droid build I showed a few videos ago. Um, I get asked all the time, like, how do you clean up your 3D prints? And the method always varies. So I've been trying to figure out the best way to make a video about that, which I'll go into more in another video. But today I'm going to talk about the the, the main stuff I use, which is primers. Like on this example, I've used some Bondo and some glazing and spot putty, but only because uh, the print was done at super high layer height, so that it's really, really chunky. This may not even be necessary for that. Um, most of the time, I go straight from a 3D print like this, and I will just start with uh, primer. Primer paint, and then I'll paint a layer, sand it, paint, sand, over and over until it looks smooth. Now, I've learned some stuff about the primers, so that's what this video is really about. Um, uh, these are pretty much the two that I used to always use all the time. Uh, Rust-Oleum I would use because it was a little bit thicker, and then the Krylon I would use because it was a lot finer. So the really good benefit to the Krylon is it doesn't kill all your details. So if you have something with like a lot of fiddly detail stuff, this does a really good job of not ruining that. Whereas this stuff gets stuck everywhere and it kind of sucks. And I'm going to get into a thing because I in phasing out Rust-Oleum pretty much all together. I kind of have some issues with, with Rust-Oleum paint that I will get into thoroughly in another video, but right now, this one, no more. We're not gonna do Rust-Oleum. Um, this Krylon is probably my favorite as far as the spray, uh, spray paint in a can comes. Uh, it's thin, like I said, and it coats really nice, but it doesn't kill your detail. One plus to this, to a thinner primer as opposed to a thicker primer is that when you spray a piece that has a lot of layer lines, the thick primer wants to lay on top of the layer lines. Let's say my fingers are the layer lines. It'll build up over the whole thing and then as the paint dries, you still see the layer lines but there's just a ton of paint on top. So a lot of what you're spraying, you end up sanding off. Whereas with a thin primer like the Krylon, it, it levels out into the layer lines a little bit better. So you're still gonna see the layer lines after it dries the first few times but most of the paint ends up in the actual grooves as opposed to on the top. And I feel like I get more, um, a better use of the paint. Like I sand off less of the paint and then more of the paint fills in the low areas, if that makes sense. Um, but I'm about to contradict myself because recently I've started using 2K Auto Primer, which comes in a can and it is cured with a catalyst. So it's a two part primer, you have to spray it through like a paint gun, and it's awesome. Now, the benefits to this stuff are are huge because it goes on thick, so when you have like a big piece like this helmet top, we're gonna spray with this and spray this too in a second so we can look at every, everything together, but this helmet doesn't have a ton of detail, but it does have some areas that you, know, you kinda wanna fill in. This paint will fill all that really nice on the first coat and then it sands really, really good. So you can sand it back down and just get a beautiful finish without coat after coat after coat of paint. And when you spray this on, what it looks like when you spray it on is what it's gonna look like when it dries or cures. It basically is curing, it's not actually drying. So you're coating it, and when you walk away, you come back an hour later, it looks the same, but it's, it's all hardened up, and then you can sand it. It's really great. Whereas with a spray paint like this, it might look nice and smooth, like you put on a bunch of paint, and when you come back later, it dries, and then you can still see all your lines, which is no fun. Another big plus to this is even though it goes on thick, um, it can be thinned out. So you can use a, a reducer, and you can add to the paint and make it thinner so that it goes on way more fine. So if you have something where you're worried about detail or anything, you can thin this a lot. I have done something that a lot of car uh, paint experts will probably think is completely sacrilegious, uh, I have thinned this with acetone, and it's worked for me. Now, I can't say it's going to work with other paints, so I'm not recommending that. I would recommend doing it with the proper 2K reducer. But um, I went online, I said, I, I'm like, I bet I could thin this with acetone. And I went online, and about 30% of the people that posted about it said you could, and then the other 70% were like, no way, can't do it, it'll ruin the paint. So I was like, oh, I don't know, I'm going to... May as well try it. So I did some experiments and it seemed to work for me. But I don't know how that affects the longevity of the paint. 
and I don't know the, the overall cost of how that is. If it's, but it seemed to work for me, so I'm just putting it out there. If you guys want to experiment more and give me some feedback, please do. Um, again, I would recommend the 2K reducer. However, this stuff is awesome. I'm going to go paint a couple pieces right now, which are this piece, some of the uh, the other short trooper helmet parts, and this uh, this guy here. I'm going to paint with this, and then I will do some of the more detailed short trooper parts with the Krylon, so you can kind of see what the differences are in the types of finish we get from the different primers. Um, but going back to that, that's pretty much how I start my cleanup on my 3D printed parts is with primer uh, almost exclusively. If it needs a little bit of extra, I might touch it up with a little Bondo or glazing, uh, spot glazing putty. Glazing and spot putty. I can never say that right. Um, if it needs it. But I try to avoid that stuff if possible. And with this kind of primer, it makes a huge difference. And uh, it just fills in so nice that you might not ever even need to use that stuff again. I don't know. So uh, let's go paint some stuff. All right, guys. So for this next stage, we are going to measure out some of this primer into a measuring cup here. It is a four to one ratio. So it's fun to a ratio that works for us. I can see this from the inside here. I'm an easy one to measure out. I'm going to go to 200 here and then uh, add in another 50. And that should put us at the right amount. So 200 of the primer and then uh, up to the 50 with the with the uh, catalyst, we should be good. Now, when you're using the 2K auto paints, you always want to wear a respirator. Stuff is super bad for you. So, respirator on. I apologize if you can't hear me. There we go. And glasses. All right, guys, so I am done with the initial primer coat with the automotive primer. I'm going to skip the spray can primer and use that for another video because I want to talk about some more stuff here. And I don't want this video to get crazy long. But um, you can see the coverage is really good. This is um, this one is two coats with a little bit of sanding between each one, and there's a couple little guys that need to be cleaned up. But overall, you can see the finish is really nice. There's no print lines really almost anywhere. So that's good. This is only two coats of this primer. Um, let me show you what it looks like after one coat. So this is one coat of primer with a very light sanding to get rid of like the surface. Um, little bumpities and stuff, which I'll talk about in a second. But uh, you can see there's still some cleanup to do. There's like a weird offset line. Stuff that needs to happen to this and it'll get another coat. But basically this actual print lines, let me get this to focus here, focus. The print lines are all but gone off of one coat of the automotive primer. One coat and the print lines are invisible. So that is amazing. Um, I think on a really hard piece, you maybe two coats would do the trick, but this is just one coat of primer. And the you can see that all of the print lines have basically vanished. So th that is what the auto uh, primer, the 2K auto primer. Now, uh, here's another piece too. Same thing, I got a little weird there's a spot where it layer offset and then it corrected. So I've got a little line there, so I need to just sand it a little bit more. I don't even know if this needs a second coat of primer, but you can see the print lines are basically gone. Um, and that's just, this is just one coat of the auto primer. So this stuff is really good. Now, right out of the gun with no sanding, it can get a little bit of a texture. As you can see here, um, that is more prevalent when I use um, a paint gun like this. This is an HVLP gun, which is high volume, low pressure. And this one shoots about 30 PSI. 
but if I use a non-HPLP, like just a standard spray gun, which this one shoots at between 50 and 70 pounds of pressure, uh, this one seems to actually shoot less bumps. Like it doesn't leave as much orange peel texture. Um, however, this one does have a smaller, finer tip, which isn't as good for spraying the primer as this one. So this is a 1.8 millimeter tip and this is a 1.4 and it's recommended to shoot through a 1.8. Now, if you thin it, the 1.4 will be fine. This spray gun is only like, I don't know, 12 or 15 bucks at Harbor Freight, and it works just fine. So if you have a compressor, uh, I would highly recommend getting a cheap spray gun. An expensive spray gun would be amazing, but if you just want to experiment, just get a cheap one. They they're hardly cost anything, um, and they last a long time. Uh, and try this 2K Auto Paint. You can get the 2K Auto Paint, the Auto auto Primer, 2K Auto Primer. You can buy in like a, a aerosol can and it basically, you have to puncture the catalyst and shake it up and mix it and then you spray your primer. That little can is like 20 plus dollars for a little tiny can with like, I don't know, a few ounces in the bottom. Uh, the whole gallon that I bought, that I had here was really cheap. It was only like 65 bucks. It's usually about a hundred dollars. I got a deal on that one. But 65 bucks for a gallon of primer that could cover tons and tons of stuff. It's a really good deal. And as you can see, like the coverage is amazing. So if you're trying to get rid of print lines, this is one coat. This is just one coat and a quick sand. And it's it's almost done. I mean, there's, you know, again, my seam lines I have to clean up. But the actual print lines are virtually gone. So people ask how I clean up my prints. Um, this is how I've been doing it lately. It's been awesome. So like, I mean, this example looks really good. Like the the top got a little bit of bondo work, but overall, I mean, the the print lines, even on the sides and stuff where I didn't do any bondo, are like just totally filled in just with the primer. So, if you have access to a compressor and can get a cheap spray gun, um, I highly recommend it. Plus, for doing clear coat, if you want to get into doing chrome and so forth. Uh, this kit that I got here, I think is less than $50. It comes with these two guns. I've got two of these kits now. This one comes with two needles. You can do a 1.4 or a 1.8. So you can do like regular uh, paint or primer with this gun. And then this little gun here is, uh, what is this size? I can't remember. It's like a 1 or a 0.8 nozzle. And it's um, my favorite clear coat gun that I've got. It's so cheap. And it sprays clear coat awesome for especially for costume parts where it's small. I wouldn't recommend something this small for a car necessarily, but for doing costume parts, this little guy has done such a good job for me like a shockingly good job for a, a Harbor Freight gun. Um, and this thing is just like a, a trooper. I've had this for I don't know eight or nine years, and it's just been through the mill, it just keeps working. So, and again, these are like cheap, like 15 bucks or less, and this one is is fine again this is not the hblp which i kind of actually think i think i actually think this one sprays the primer better than the uh than this one which is nicer for a lot of other paints but this one i think sprays the primer better and it's cheaper so you know can't really go wrong there but uh anyway hope that was helpful to some people i'm sure i broke a ton of like auto painting rules when i was doing this um but you know give it a shot Give me feedback if it works for you. If it doesn't work for you, if you have questions, let me know. And I will see you kids soon. Bye. Make sure it's well mixed. Oh, nothing.